안녕하십니까? Nice to see you here today. There's kind of a mist in the valley this morning. And after chanting, even to have a couple minutes of silent meditation is uh, very peaceful. When we're sitting quietly together, just the sound of the uh, fan and the mami. Often in the early morning or the evenings, this whole valley is quiet like that. And nowadays, our world is very noisy. So to have some chance to uh, sit quietly, even for a, a few minutes, is uh, very uh, wonderful. Uh, best if we have a quiet mind. Quiet mind doesn't mean that it's uh, quiet inside, just that our mind isn't moving. Then, then we can become one with any situation without any resistance, uh, without any, uh, how can I say, attachment. Uh, this week I was reading uh, some English translation of uh, the teaching of uh, Sosan Desa. Uh, he quotes an old poem uh, in the writings that I was reading. And I remember Sung San Sinim put this poem on the wall at the Providence Zen Center in America. And one day walking down the hall, I saw this uh, Chinese writing on, uh, on the wall. And next to it, Sung San Sinim had put the English translation. Then I read this poem and it made me very happy. Uh, what this says is, uh, before the ancient Buddha appeared, one thing already perfectly clear. Shakyamuni didn't understand it. How could he transmit it to Mahakashapa? Then when I read that, I became very happy. I thought, if Buddha didn't understand this, then if I don't understand it, no problem. <laughs> so if you don't understand your true nature, that's correct. But most of us cannot just rest comfortably with that. So we make many kinds of understanding in our mind. 
We make this is good, this is bad. She's like this, he's like that. I'm like this, the world's like that. We make some kind of understanding. Then we believe it's the truth. Then we get angry. Then, as Zen Master Sun San used to say, soon stupid action appears. So maybe it's better if we return to this original pure and clear thing that we don't understand. So in this poem, uh, the, the ancient master said, how could Buddha transmit it to Mahakashiva? He doesn't understand it. How can he transmit it to Mahakashiva? So what is this thing we call transmission? Uh, many years ago, uh, when Kunsunim was teaching in America, uh, one day in front of the group he said, Buddha saw a star and got enlightenment. So Kunsunim said to everyone in America one day, Buddha saw a star and got enlightenment. Then Kun Sinim said, what kind of enlightenment did Buddha get? Then everybody was silent. Then Kun Sinim said, star enlightenment. So when we become one with something, that name is enlightenment. That name's also transmission. So this star and your mind become one. That's the name is enlightenment, also that star transmission. The Korean people like Korean food, yeah? It's true? Jinja? Kurusunika? When I travel outside Korea with, Korean, with people from Korea, they always want to go to Korean restaurant. <laughs> When I was growing up uh, at my mother's house, we ate rice one time every month. But in Korea, when I came here, we had rice three times every day. <laughs> So for me, maybe for most Western people, too much, too many times eat rice. <laughs> but often, often if you eat something a lot, your body maybe begins to like it. A few years ago, I was uh, teaching in Malaysia for two months. We visited many Chinese temples in Malaysia. 
sometimes, uh, maybe one week, two weeks, three weeks past, I didn't see any white people, only Malay people and Chinese people and Indian people. Every day we had Chinese food, three times a day. <laughs> The Chinese food is not bad. It's okay to me. I like But you know, Chinese rice and Korean rice is different. Chinese rice is very thin and doesn't so much stick together. Uh, Korean rice is like the old Korean people, short and stocky. <laughs> also, Korean rice always together action with other rice. <laughs> So uh, after two months, I flew back to Korea. And then one of our Bolsong names went to the airport to pick me up. Then uh, it was around dinner time. We were driving into Seoul. Then she said to me, uh, dinner, not so much, a little fruit or something. Then she said to me, do you want dinner? Then I thought for a moment, yeah, I want dinner. So I told her, yes. Then she asked me, what, what kind of food do you want? I said, I want Jungkook and Korean rice. <laughs> then we went, after I ate that, I felt so good. <laughs> <laughs> then she said to me, you got Korean food transmission now. <laughs> yeah. Even our body changes now. Oh, Korean food makes me feel good. <laughs> Uh, in Buddhism, we think a transmission is a big thing. Yeah, in some ways, maybe it's a big thing. I don't know. If your mind... But original transmission just means you and anything become one. When we're children, we experience that all the time. Maybe at the Mogyokdang, you take your child and put them in the, 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 cold, the cold bath. Then they, ah, you know, it's cold. <laughs> they not thinking anything, just to become one, just experience. They got neng tang transmission. <laughs> So this whole universe is always offering us transmission. <laughs> Every moment. Opposites thinking, we cannot experience this transmission. 
then we cannot get a real deep satisfaction from life. Then we depend on outside things for satisfaction. If I get high position in society for a little while, I feel good. If I get some money, I feel good. If I'm healthy or I like the way I look, then that moment, some satisfaction. But those are outside things. They're, they're all impermanent. Then when the situation or your body condition changes, you will get suffering. But if we learn to get this moment-to-moment -moment transmission from this world, then always can find some deep satisfaction. Uh, when we turn on the water in our house to do something, we want to drink something, or wash, or take the uh, water to cook. If we're paying attention moment to moment, then just the appearance of this water, the feeling of the water, gives us transmission and you get great happiness. So we must learn to bring our minds back into this present moment, not attached to our opposite thinking. Then we can experience moment to moment transmission. Uh, one time uh, around 1983, uh, Sung San Sanim was scheduled to go to Spain to teach uh, in our Zen Center in Spain. That time he was going to travel with one American monk and one American lay woman. They would travel together and teach over in Spain. But just before the trip, uh, Kunsanim had some body problem, had to go into the hospital. So he could not go on the trip. Then in his room, before he went to the hospital, he called this monk, this American monk. <coughs> Then he said, I cannot go on this trip, but they already have a schedule, so we must uh, help them. So you go, you teach. Then this uh, monk was uh, sort of a, a little surprised and scared and honored. Oh. Uh, 
Then this monk said, but who will give Kongan interview? Then Sung San Tanim said to him, you give Kongan interview. Then he took his Zen stick from his uh, table and handed it to the monk and said, I give you transmission. Then this monk thought, oh my god, I'm getting a transmission secretly from Zen Master. <laughs> Just like Yukjo Desa got secret transmission from Fifth Patriarch. <laughs> so he got very excited. Then Sung San Sanim said, Stick transmission. <laughs> <laughs> so, anybody want to come to my room? I'll give you stick transmission anytime, no problem. <laughs> Every day we give transmission to all beings. <laughs> Everything we do, we're giving somebody else our mind. And what kind of mind are we giving? <laughs> uh, now in, in Korea, lawyers have bigger, bigger job. But um, when I came in around 1984, I don't think the lawyers had such a big job in Korea. Maybe now, if you have a car accident or something, you sue the other person. But I think uh, 20, 30 years ago, people didn't sue each other so much. If you have some accident, then right there, stop. Then get out of the car, two people. Then they shout at each other. <laughs> Maybe 10 minutes or 20 minutes. Then one person gives some money to the other, then finish. <laughs> kind of transmission, you know. <laughs> Many times I saw in Seoul some bus and some car a little too close. Then the bus will drive right next to the car. Then the maybe red light. Then the two drivers stare at each other. Mind to mind transmission. Han Maung. <laughs> then uh, some, okay, enough, then go. <laughs> so every day, what kind of transmission do you give to other people? <laughs> So I have a story about that. This happened, I think, in the 1960s uh, at uh, Huagesa. One member of Huagesa was a fairly successful businessman. 
then when he got into his uh, 50s, maybe almost 60s, uh, he and his wife, uh, not good relationship. Uh, this, and this wife decided she didn't like him anymore. He didn't like her. You know, of course you know, uh, usually in Korea, wife's job is, most places in the world, wife's job is to get up and make breakfast. Before Dharma talk, I was talking to Tonyok Bosa about uh, making breakfast. I asked her, do you make breakfast for your family every day? <laughs> then uh, she said, yes, of course. <laughs> But um, I just thought to myself, I don't remember my mother making breakfast except Sunday. <laughs> I'm the oldest uh, son. I used to wake up early, leave before my parents got up, even in primary school. So now I want to ask my two young Nam Dong Seng, two young Iseo. I want to ask them, did mom make you breakfast? <laughs> she didn't make me breakfast. <laughs> so this uh, this uh, woman that time she wouldn't get up anymore and make breakfast for her husband. Then one day this uh, uh, man went to the temple to see Sung San Sini. Then uh, he said uh, to Kun Sinim, I have a problem. My wife's no good. I don't like my wife. <laughs> she doesn't take care of me. She doesn't care about me at all. Then the Sansanim said, uh, you know, she never gets up in the morning before I go to work. Then Sung Sansanim asked him, uh, in the morning, what do you do when you first get up? Then he said that after I wash, uh, he had a, a little altar in his house with Buddha. He said, after I wash, I go and light incense and I bow to Buddha. And then his parents lived with him, so he'd go to his parents' room and he'd say good morning and bow to them. Then I just leave because of no food. Then Sun San Sinim said, uh, every morning you bow to Buddha, you bow to your parents. Then you must go into your wife's room and bow to her and say good morning. What do you say in the morning? You say that? Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> then this man, no, that's a, why should I do that? Uh, 
Then Kunsim said, Buddha said everything has Buddha nature. So your wife also have Buddha nature. You bow to Buddha, you bow to your parents. You must go bow to your wife. <laughs> So finally, this man said, oh, okay, okay. Then the next morning, he woke up and bowed to Buddha, bowed to parents. Then he went into his room. Then, <laughs> go out. <laughs> then uh, his wife, uh, nothing, not pay any attention. <laughs> then the next morning, about the Buddha, about the parents going to go out. <laughs> go out. <laughs> Then his wife uh, took the uh, uh, ubo and pulled over her head. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, every morning he'd about the Buddha, about the parents, go in, about to his wife. <laughs> but uh, every morning do it, do it, do it. Uh, finally, uh, for him, it's okay. It doesn't matter anymore. Bow to the Buddha, bow to the parents, then go in his room, and go. Then after about one week, ten days, the wife's thinking, why does he keep doing that? <laughs> Something wrong. Maybe he has girlfriend. <laughs> so she started to call the office during the day. Then, oh, what are you doing now? Oh, I'm at work. Why are you calling? And nothing, nothing. Hang on. <laughs> then she starts uh, checking. What's he doing all day long? But uh, nothing strange. But every morning, bow to Buddha, bow to parents, bow to wife, go out. So uh, he doesn't have a girlfriend. Maybe money problem. <laughs> then she went to the bank, check all their bank account. Everything is still there, but the, yeah, the money's still there. He's not gambling or something, you lose the money. <laughs> So, this is not woman problem, not money problem, not, no change with alcohol, same as before. What's happening? Then she thought, maybe he's becoming crazy. <laughs> <laughs> if he becomes crazy, we have a problem. <laughs> so then, when he'd come home at night, she'd pay a little more attention to him. <laughs> a little talking and uh, watch him eating and this kind of thing. <laughs> and try not to fight. Then uh, as things went along, he also is part of his mourning now. 
bow to Buddha, bow to parents, then also bow to wife. It's a good feeling, you know, every day. Then there's a wife thinking, oh, he doesn't look crazy, you know, actually one time I actually liked him. <laughs> then finally one day he got up, bowed to Buddha, bowed to parents, and bowed to wife, Anyangi Chumushutsun Nika. Then she also got out of bed, Anyangi Chumushutsun Nika, bow back to her husband. <laughs> So, uh, we should reflect back. What kind of mind transmission am I giving this world every day? Then, whether it's a good mind transmission, bad, doesn't matter. That's just our, our feeling, our idea. But when we come to the temple, if when we're chanting, we just chant. Yeah. You and the sound become one. Of course, we have many things in our life we're concerned about, sometimes problems and sometimes difficult things. But when we do keto, if we take that energy, our feeling energy, our thinking energy, put it in, just change it, make it become sound. Then you and the sound become one. Then your mind and Kwan Sen Bolso mind or Sogamuni Bo's mind become one. Then your mind will become bright. Slowly, slowly, it will become bright. When we're sitting, meditation, just don't know. Pay attention moment to moment. I can, the air coming in, the air coming out, breathing. We're a, pay attention to our breathing, but who's breathing? Don't know. If we practice like that, then slowly our everyday life activities also become practice. Then our mind slowly will become like its original nature, very bright. That will shine to our family, our country, and all beings. That will give us a satisfaction inside, not dependent on circumstances. Then, our life will become satisfying and we can benefit everyone in our life, automatically. Then, moment to moment, you'll get tree transmission, songpogi transmission. Everything will give you transmission, moment to moment. 
네, 순간순간 어, 나무는 장법, 성품기 장법 이런 것들을 갖게 되는 것이죠. That's a wonderful. 그것이 바로 훌륭한 어, 경이로운 것입니다. So let's all try that together. 그러니 우리 모두 그것을 하도록 노력합시다. How do we say? 오직 할 뿐. 오직 할 뿐입니다. 예, 감사합니다.